Okay, so it's been two months now that I've been using the Sony WF-1000 XM5 earbuds, and I honestly think I might have tested these more thoroughly than any other tech reviewer here on YouTube. And here's why I say that. I've taken these earbuds from London to France on the Eurostar, and do you know what they call the Eurostar in Paris? Le Chateau. I then took them on a plane from London to Spain, and then I got on another plane from London to Frankfurt in Germany, and then from Frankfurt in Germany to Korea. That's a 12 hour flight, and then back from Korea to Poland, and then from Poland back to London. And then I took them from London to Italy and the Colosseum. And I did film a video out in Rome, so if you wanna check that out, I'll link it at the end of this one. And of course, I have used these for many, many long dog walks with the Phantom Menace. So this video is gonna be nothing like those ones where people just kind of reel off the spec sheets. Instead, I'll actually tell you about my real world experience with these earbuds, the things that I like, the things that could be improved, and also about the battery life and the general wear and tear on the earbuds, because I know that's something that people talk about a lot. So anyway, let's start this off with build and design. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you something you probably already know, especially if you're a Sony fan. Sony's build quality is really built to last. I have so many Sony products in this house that still are going strong even after a decade, including this Sony audio product. So this is my Sony SRS X7. This was actually gifted to me by Sony when I used to work for them in Harrods Technology. And I actually have an interesting story about working at Harrods. I was nominated and actually won a place in the Harrods Book of Legends. And then one week later, I got thrown out of the building, escorted out of the building to be more precise. It was kind of like that scene in Mary Poppins, you know when he punches his hat and then turns his umbrella inside out. Yeah, that's what they've done to me. And I have to give a massive thank you to Sony for this speaker because this is still the very best sounding Bluetooth speaker of this size that I've ever heard. It truly is awesome. If you could pick one up, definitely do. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is the XM5s do have that Sony build quality. They're showing no signs of wear and tear on the earbuds, the ear tips, or the case. And something that I really appreciate about these earbuds is the fact that Sony have managed to shrink them down compared to the XM4s. They've made them lighter as well. So not only are they now more comfortable to wear for extremely long periods of time, like the flight to Korea, but they also are far more secure than before. Now here's a testament to how comfortable these earbuds actually are. I fell asleep with these earbuds in my ears with no music playing, just the noise cancelling on, and I did not wake up at any point because they were uncomfortable, and they didn't fall out of my ears. Now this was an extreme test of how secure these earbuds are. When I was in Rome, I rented an electric scooter to visit all of the tourist attractions, and if you've ever been to Rome, you'll know this, there are cobblestones everywhere and the scooters like really bouncing around. And at no point was I worried about the earbuds falling out. And you might be wondering, why was I wearing earbuds whilst on a scooter? Well, I had Google Maps on so I could navigate using the voice cues and it worked really, really well. So if you're wondering about the fit and how secure the fit is, it's very good. If you do this, you open the Sony headphones app, you go to the system tab, scroll down to where it says, determine optimal ear tips. And here it will test the fit and how much sound leakage is getting around the edges of those tips. And when you do this, not only is it gonna increase the comfort and how secure they are in your ear, it will also improve the sound quality. So if you do end up buying the WF-1000 XM5s, the first thing I recommend you do is this and test all of the sizes to see which one fits you the best. Now, the design of the case is really nice and it's one of my favorite earbud cases out there today. It's got nice smooth corners, it's got a nice matte texture, it's very easy to fit into your pockets and despite it being made of a lot of recycled materials, it still feels really, really premium. And even after two months of me throwing this into bags with my metal Ridge wallet, which is a Damascus steel, and my keys and coins and things like that, it actually has no markings on it at all. So I'm very impressed with the durability of the case and the earbuds. And here is that Damascus steel wallet I mentioned before. This is from The Ridge, and this brings me really nicely onto my channel sponsor, The Ridge. So if you've ever thought about possibly upgrading your old school wallet to something a bit more modern, something with a bit of tech in it, like RFID blocking, and you want premium materials used on your wallet, there's none better 
than the Ridge. And now would be the perfect time to do it because the Ridge have partnered up with Hennessy for their summer sweepstakes and they're doing some limited edition Hennessy wallets and key cases. And check this out, without spending a penny, you can enter to win a branded Ford Bronco or $75,000 in cash. And every dollar you spend using the link below this video, you'll earn an entry into that competition. And if you buy one of these limited edition Hennessy products, you'll get an extra 1,000 entries. And if you use my exclusive link, theridge.com forward slash whatgear and the code whatgear at the checkout, you'll get 10% off your order and an additional 10 entries into the competition. The Ridge wallets come with a lifetime guarantee and I will be giving away these to a couple of my channel members. So if you haven't joined that, feel free. I'm very happy with my Damascus Steel wallet at this point in time. The Ridge wallets do come with a lifetime guarantee and in my opinion, they are truly awesome. But don't just take my word for it. You can check out over 80,000 five star reviews and see what they're saying. And check this out, this is how confident the Ridge are in their products. If you want to test drive a Ridge wallet for 99 days, if you don't love it by the end of those 99 days, you can return it for a full refund. And do me a favor, if you do win the Bronco or the 75K, buy us a drink, will ya? Maybe you like a Hennessy Stinger or something like that. So I do recommend you guys enter the competition. It is free to do. Use the link ridge.com forward slash what gear. There are clickable links in the description and in the top pinned comment below this video. So if you've ever been thinking about getting a Ridge wallet, now is the time. Now, before we move on to how the battery life held up over the two months and extensive testing, let me give an honorable shout out to some of the design features. I really appreciate the style of the XM5 earbuds. They just feel kind of very stylish and very Japanese in design and they kind of give me Metal Gear Solid vibes. I don't know why. Maybe they look like something that Raiden from Metal Gear would wear. And I love the gold mesh that they've used. And in regards to the case, I really appreciate the fact that Sony have brought back the Bluetooth pairing button because on the XM4s, you had to hold your finger on both capacitive touch areas until they went into pairing mode. And it was really quite inconvenient when you wanted to quickly switch. Now just holding the button down is so much easier. And if you're a true Sony fan, you'll probably remember a time where Sony put NFC on every device. And I asked Sony at the pre-brief for these earbuds why they don't have NFC. And the fact is that Sony collect user diagnostics from all of their devices and they could see that people weren't really using NFC. So that's why they kind of scrapped using NFC all the time. Now the best tech products with the best batteries are the ones that you don't ever have to worry about recharging. Now in the two months that I've been using these earbuds, there's only been one occasion where the battery has run out unexpectedly. And that's while I was sleeping on a 12 hour flight, the ANC switched off. And then I was rudely awoken by a crazy loud sound of a plane. And I can tell you from that plane journey specifically that the battery life being up to eight hours is definitely true. And in fact, it's even longer than that if you're not listening to music and you've just got the ANC on, on its own. And since I've been using these earbuds, I can count on one hand how many times I've actually had to recharge the earbuds. Most of the time I recharge the earbuds is just because it's conveniently next to a charger and the charger isn't in use. So I just plug it in because why not? So if you're wondering about the battery life and the performance of the battery life, I can tell you it is fantastic. Okay, now let's talk a little bit more about the fit and the comfort, but more importantly, the controls. So Sony have done a great job at shrinking down the size of the earbuds and the weight of the earbuds without compromising the sound quality or the battery life. And the foam tips that they provide with the earbuds do create a good seal and do secure them nicely in the ear. But I did notice from time to time, I would need to readjust them a little bit. And I did notice on one occasion, I actually managed to knock the earbud out of my ear. And that got me thinking about the difference between bud style earbuds and stem style earbuds. And about all of the pros and cons that come with those different form factors. So here's the conclusion I came to. With the bud style earbuds like the XM5s, no matter how secure they are in your ear, if they take a knock from the top, eventually they will be levered out of your ear and fall out. And that is kind of unavoidable unless you have a kind of wing tip fitting for the earbud. With the stem style earbud like the AirPods, if they get knocked from the top, the stem actually hooks onto your ear and doesn't allow them to fall out. So that seems to be a real advantage. But a disadvantage for this style is the fact that the cabinet of the earbud appears to be a lot smaller 
than the bud style earbud. And when an earbud has more space inside, this means the drivers can move more air and Sony have upgraded the drivers to an 8.4 millimeter driver, which is considerably bigger than the previous earbuds. And because of this, you'll get better sound reproduction through these. But here's a couple more advantages of a stem style earbud. When it comes to volume control, you have the swipe gesture. So you can swipe up or down for volume up or down. You also have the option for pinch gestures. And of course you get the tap gestures, which are the only ones that the buds have. And another benefit of a stem is the fact that the microphone can be pointed in the general direction of your mouth, which could help with mic pickup. So it would be interesting to see a Sony earbud with stems. Let me know if you'd like to see that in the comments below. Genuinely interested in your answers. But it's important to know that Sony haven't neglected the user controls. In fact, there are so many advanced ones within the Sony headphones app. For example, you've got the adaptive ANC control. This is where the ANC kind of works on autopilot and can tell whether you're walking or running or sitting still or on a train or a plane or whatever. And it will adjust the levels without you having to touch the earbuds at all. There's also the speak to chat feature where you can literally just start talking and it will put it into ambient mode and let the sound come through. As soon as you stop talking, it goes back into ANC. And there is a way to adjust the volume on the XM 5s and it is with a quadruple tap on the earbud. And there is a brand new feature that's only been introduced to these earbuds which will help you avoid needing to use your fingers to control them. It is the gestures. So there's the new head gestures where you can literally just nod your head to answer a phone call or turn your head like this to ghost that phone call. So that's pretty cool. So I did a mic test comparison between the XM5, the XM4 and the AirPods Pro. And in that video, in the comments section, quite a few people said that I had a faulty pair of XM5s or that I somehow rigged the comparison to make the XM5s sound worse than they are. Now, first of all, that's not my style and I would never do that. And on my travels, I did think about this and think how could have that test been affected negatively for the XM5s. And the only conclusion I could come to was the fact that I was recording it on an Apple Mac. And maybe the Apple Mac favors the AirPods codex over other earbuds. I could totally see that being something that Apple would do. So for this mic test, I'm gonna record the audio on an Android device for the XM5s, and I'm gonna record the audio for the AirPods on an iPhone. That way we're on even ground and we can see how the two compare. So let's do that. Okay, so you might be wondering why I'm filming this on the S23 Ultra. It's because the S23 Ultra's Pro Video app actually allows you to capture audio from a Bluetooth device. So what you're hearing right now is the XM5s with no background noise in the room. Let me know what you think of the sound quality and now compare this to the AirPods. Okay, so I'm recording this with Apple products now. What you're hearing right now is the mic quality with no background noise in the room. How does it sound? Does it sound better than the Sony's? Or just as good, or maybe not quite as good? Let me know in the comments. And now let's go back to the XM5s and introduce some noise. So how did the AirPods compare to the XM5 with no background noise? Now let's introduce some background noise and some wind and see how the XM5s hold up. Okay, so now there's some pretty loud background noise. I'm emulating standing on a street because it's too cold outside for me to go do it for real. And now let's introduce some wind. Okay, so now I've got pretty strong wind blowing directly at my face. I've got the road noise. How are the XM5s handling this extreme situation? Okay, let's introduce the road noise. Okay, so let me know how the mics are handling with this road noise just to the right hand side of me. And now let's introduce the wind. Okay, so we've got the wind and the road noise together now on the AirPods Pro Generation 2. Let me know, does it sound better than the XM5s? Let me know in the comments. And this concludes the mic test. Okay, now let's talk about ANC and the ambient pass-through. In my opinion, the XM5s are very clearly some of the best noise cancelling earbuds you can get right now. In comparison to the AirPods, I do believe these perform better most of the time. If you're gonna be using AirPods specifically with Apple products, there are definitely some advantages to that. But if you do a blind test side by side, I think most people will pick the XM5s for the better ANC quality. And this is likely gonna be due to the upgraded QN2 chip which is in both earbuds and also both earbuds now have an additional processor. So there's dual processors per earbud and Sony have added an extra mic on each earbud compared to the XM4s. So those are some significant steps towards improving the noise cancelling 
here on Sony's flagship earbuds. And one thing I noticed about these in comparison to the XM4s is the noise cancelling isn't quite as aggressive. And that's a good thing because when you have very aggressive ANC, what you can often get is this kind of cabin pressure, that feeling where you go in a tunnel or something like that and your ears feel like they need to pop. I hate that feeling and you do get that from some noise cancellers, but not with the XM5s. So if I was to give these a score out of 10 for noise cancelling ability, it would be 8.5. Now ambient pass through is just as important as ANC to some, and I must say the ambient pass through here is very good, even in strong winds. Now what happens on some earbuds is when the wind hits them, it creates this massive amount of distortion and noise inside the earbuds. And thanks to Sony's repositioning of the mics, you don't get any of that here on the XM5s, which means these are perfect for running or cycling or anything like that where there's gonna be lots of wind rushing past you. And one of the great things about the ambient pass-through is it can adjust on the fly based off of your surroundings, but you can also adjust it manually to let in as much sound or as little sound as you want. And even with the ambient sound set to 20, which is the maximum, you don't seem to get any of that white noise or hiss that you do get with some other earbuds. And something that I recommend you do if you are gonna be getting these earbuds and you are gonna use them on a plane is to enable the voice pass through. This is a fantastic feature because it leaves the noise canceling on, but only allows the vocal frequencies to get through. So you still get the benefit of the blocked noise of the plane or the train or wherever it is you're on, but you can also still hear the people. And of course the speak to chat function is invaluable as well. Just start talking and it goes into ambient mode, stop talking and it kicks back in. And something else you can do here within the ambient mode, which I've not really seen anybody else talk about is this. Next to the ambient mode, you'll see the little settings icon here. If you hit that, you can actually adjust the sensitivity of the voice detection and you can adjust the time that it lasts as well, which is really cool. And even me, myself in the past, I've had some issues where the speak to chat just activates because someone else is talking. You can set it down to the lower sensitivity and prevent that from happening if you want. And for something else you need to know when all else fails, you can literally just take the earbud out and because there's a wear detect sensor on it, it will automatically pause the music. You can have your conversation, put the earbud back in and it'll start playing the music again. Or if you don't want to take the earbud out, you can literally just rest your finger on the left one and this will activate the ambient pass through. Okay, so now let's talk about sound quality and this is definitely an area of strength for the Sony XM5s not only because they have the newly designed drivers and the big cabinet and Sony's signature sound and all that kind of stuff, but also because they have LDAC. Ah! Which could be an ancient Klingon swear word, but it is in fact the best method of getting 24-bit audio to the earbuds. And it's around three times faster than what the Apple AirPods use in terms of bit rate. And just to keep it simple, it can get much better quality sound to the earbuds from your phone over Bluetooth. Sony have added some really nice additions to the Sony headphones app, which is already one of the best in the business when the XM4s came out. But now with the release of the XM5s, it's even better than ever. There's a new Find My Equalizer on the sound tab, so you can literally listen to your favorite track and step-by-step -step go through different frequency profiles and effectively filter out the best sound for you specifically. So your own tailored style EQ. But of course, if you know what you're doing with an EQ, of course you can dial in your own EQs, which is what I've done. And here are three of my favorite EQs for these earbuds that I've created. So this one right here is what I've dialed in for EDM. So this is electronic dance music, anything that's kind of more modern. And actually you could even go quite a bit higher with the bass if you wanted to. You could turn up the clear bass and the bass levels here in the lower frequencies as well, if it isn't quite bassy enough for you, but I do feel like this is good for EDM. This one right here is my hip hop EQ, and you can see I've maxed out the bass there, it's very high here as well, good clarity in the mids, and not too high there, so the snares and things like that in hip hop isn't gonna be too piercing for you. And this is the one I've dialed in for rock, so it's got a good bit of power to the music, there's still bass there, but there's an emphasis on the clarity of the instruments and the vocals. So if you do get these earbuds, test these out and let me know what you think. So another new feature which enhances these earbuds even more is the spatial sound and head tracking. So this is where the sound will sound like it's coming from in front of you, like you're at a stage show and there's an actual band on stage. And when you turn your head left or right, the sound will stay in place. So it's a really cool feature, especially if you're listening to 360 reality audio. Okay, so now let's get into the pros and cons after two months of using the XM5s. And first of all, let me just say 
no tech product is perfect. So if you ever see a tech review with five out of five stars or 10 out of 10 stars, that. See now that's some bullshit. Because that's like saying the next model can't be better than the old model. And I think you and I both know that that is most of the time. There is a rare case where sometimes the newer version isn't as good as the older version, but it is rare. So I've devised a new scoring criteria. It is in prototype phase right now, and these will be the first earbuds on the leaderboard. And it does consist of 11 categories, and you might be thinking, why didn't I just keep it simple and make it 10? Well, when it comes to music, sometimes you have to turn it up to 11. So I've got 11 categories for the grading of these, and each category is gonna be scored out of 10 with 0.5s included. So here's how I scored a Sony WF-1000 XM5s. For style, I'm giving them an eight out of 10. I love that Metal Gear vibe I'm getting from these, and they do feel very Sony, very Japanese, and those are all good things. The case design, 8.5 out of 10. I love the rounded corners, the texture, the fact that they've really held up after a lot of travel. Now usability, I'm giving them 7.5 out of 10. And the reason for this is the volume control seems a bit clunky and that is quite important when it comes to earbuds. You don't always wanna be reaching for your phone for volume controls. So that's why it's 7.5 out of 10. When it comes to comfort, I'm giving them 7.5 out of 10 as well. Although they are very comfortable, I fell asleep in them. They do sit securely in my ears. I do feel like they are slightly top heavy and that downward force could actually pull them out of your ear, whereas that doesn't happen with the stem style earbuds. So 7.5 out of 10. Now microphone quality, 7.5 out of 10. And I do believe there's not really any earbuds that are higher than that at this point in time. I haven't come across any exceptional mics on any earbuds just yet. So I'm setting the bar there at 7.5. ANC, 8.5 out of 10, because the ANC is fantastic. It is the fact that they've got the dual processors and the extra microphones and all of the software on the app as well that just works so well. So it's definitely an area of strength for these earbuds. Ambient aware, eight out of 10, there's no white noise, there's no hissing. You can adjust them on the fly. And if you have the adaptive sound control one, it does it for you. So that's fantastic. Sound clarity. So this is like vocal range and things like this. I've given these an eight out of 10. It's a very clear sound. There's no muddiness there in the mid range. Bass is an important one to some people out there. And these are very respectable in the bass department. But actually I do think the XM4s had a bit more bass and maybe that's that larger cabinet that they had. But still these are very respectable and I'm giving them eight out of 10. Battery life, 8.5 out of 10. And like I said before, I never had to even think about recharging these I would literally just plug them in whenever was convenient and I never felt panicked that I was going to run out at any point so 8.5 for battery life software 8.5 as well and one of the reasons I've given these such a high score for software is the fact that I know there's more features in the pipeline which I saw on the beta version of the app which are not yet released so there is room for this score to improve but as it stands right now I do think Sony do set the bar for earbud app software. So 8.5 out of 10, which gives the Sony XM5s a final score of 88.5 out of 110. Now these scores are based off of my two month testing period and really there's only a couple of areas that need improvement. It is gonna be the stability in the year. For people that do very energetic exercises, maybe they could introduce some kind of wing tip attachment like we see on the Beats. Another area that can be improved a bit more is the microphone quality. I'm not sure how this is possible with a better microphones, better software, who knows how they could achieve that. So to conclude this video for now, Sony sits at the number one spot, the champion on the Watt Gear earbud leaderboard based off of these scores. You can tell they're a very solid set of earbuds. Let me know in the comments what earbuds you'd like me to check out next with my new scoring system. If you think this scoring system is missing anything or it needs a bit of tweaking, let me know in the comments below as well. Because like I said, it is a prototype at this point in time. Anyway, it's been a long two months and a lot of traveling and there's still more to do. And uh, hopefully, these can come with me and do a few more air miles. So I appreciate you guys for watching this one. If you want to check out my trip to Rome or the comparison between these and the X and 4s and the AirPods, those thumbnails on screen right now. If you just subscribed, you're now one of the finest subscribers known to man. And I will see you in the next one.